Well, recently I've been to the Omsk Museum, uh, the governor's mansion, to look at the native uh, populations that were in Siberia, in western Siberia, for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. And they had quite a few artifacts. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about the American Indians and the great difference between uh, the Russian Empire and what happened to the American Indians. Take a look at this map here. You can see the uh, what uh, populations of Indians were in America at the time when the white uh, uh, settlers from Europe uh, came in. Uh, I grew up in the Iroquois uh, district there, the Finger Lake in New York uh, section way up at the top, uh, up in, uh, by New York, uh, west of New York now City. Now, the Indians were kind of played off of other nations. For example, the French would you know, use money and different things to have them attack the British, and the British would use them to attack the French or the Americans. They were pawns used back and forth. They sometimes were unified, but sometimes not. But they uh, were having a losing battle. They also were able to attain uh, weapons eventually, but that didn't make, uh, at that time, it would not have made much difference. The once proud Indian culture in America was destroyed. Uh, as they uh, sided with the Brits, the British nation, mainly during the Revolutionary War, uh, the, England didn't want America to go west of the Allegheny Mountains because that would have stirred up the Indian populations. They didn't want to deal with the expenses there. So they worked with the Indians, the Iroquois, to uh, ally themselves against the Americans. But when the Americans won the war, of course, they pushed right across the Allegheny Mountains into all that beautiful farmland in the Great Lakes. In the region. south, you can see on the map the Cherokee uh, there, and they were forced west as well. So as immigrants, migrations were pouring in from Europe, uh, the Indians were looked at as subhuman. Uh, the black, black people were looked at not as humans, but as cattle. Uh, and the Indians hardly better. So some Indians actually earned sla had slaves uh, in the south, but uh, they were forced to give up all their property and go west in what is called the Trail of Tears, where they had to cross and go beyond the Mississippi River that divides the east and west in America. As soon as they got to the, the west, though, the Americans were pushing west as well. And there were several Indian wars all the way uh, through the 19th century. Uh, but uh, mainly, they lost all these wars, the Indians, and the Americans poured west. Now, there were supposed to be... An, uh, Oklahoma is a big Indian reservation. However, of course, they discovered the you know the Americans discovered oil there, and suddenly that became valuable property. Today, most of the Indians in America live on poor reservations and locked in a cycle of poverty. I'm looking at the internet that says forty percent poverty rate uh, poverty rate on Indian reservations uh, is high. It's high there because there are no economic opportunities, no way to uh, borrow money to start uh, or to mortgage their property to get a loan um, and to start a business. Uh, Ilvin Petrov, the famous Soviet writers, also went to visit a, um, an Indian reservation and they noted the, like, the hatred towards white people that they could see. Uh, uh, they said, quote on this quote, mustered the uh, why it is amply clear that the American government was being deliberately mistaken in its attitudes toward the Indians. They preferred them on reservations and offered them education in English instead of allowing them to develop their own culture. If we look at the Russian Empire, uh, it's much different and a whole different other story as the Indian uh, cultures, native cultures of Siberia are in their own way, thriving. There's no comparison to the American Indian situation. Uh, here, there's in Russia, is like a collections of people united under one nation uh, with equality. This may come from the time when the Mongols invaded uh, west of Russia and Tatars married in between with Russians. So there wasn't this idea maybe of this racial At divide. any rate, all the way back into the Mongol Empire, the Mongols and uh, certain uh, princes from Moscow occasionally allied themselves to attack other 
parts of Russia or to other uh, places. So these nations were intermingled uh, in Siberia. For the uh, tribes that existed in the north, uh, they remained pretty much intact. But all of them collected under Russia with the same ability to access uh, schooling, uh, to, uh, to change their life if they want to, or to stay on the reservation. And I guess uh, Russia, we could say, is a very unique place because of its Russian Orthodox uh, Christian heritage with its kind of inclusion, not uh, with this Western European, you know, you know, divide South America, burn everything, you know, take uh, all the gold and haul it back to Madrid. Uh, that was not not the case. These were uh, nations incorporated, and in the Soviet system, these also this ideology also continued united. So there's not pressure to conform, but many nations and different religions in Russia are allowed to freely uh, to worship, where there's not the pressure uh, or you know patronizing uh, look that. Uh, Russians would look at one region and uh, say that we're better to another region of of native Siberians, for example, but that they're looked on and their cultures are celebrated.